Houston's one of the most diverse cities in the nation, and we've always had communities that have gathering spaces, spaces of music and joy and fellowship, and the Pan American Ballroom was that place for the Mexican and Latino community here in Houston. At 1705 North Main, you had this amazing space. You'd walk up to this wrought iron gates with this huge Alamo style parapet with this neon sign that proclaimed who was going to be performing at the Pan American Ballroom. The very first time I went to the Pan American, I was 15 years old. It was just a really nice building. When you walked in, right, right away you started like, oh my God, we're going to start dancing here. The dance floor was big, nice, roomy. They have one big, large dance floor, you know, beautiful with wooden floor. And then they had the second dance floor on the other side, just on another catty corner to the stage. If it was a big act, then the both floors were, it'd be full, full. I mean, and everyone danced, everybody was dancing. It opened in the late 1950s, and by the 1960s and 70s, Tejano music had been the king. You had big bands playing there, you had folks that were dressed to the nines, and really just enjoying this kind of cocktail culture of live music and entertainment. I remember my first experience at the Pan American nightclub. It was a big thing to have your quinceanera, sweet 16, or your wedding there. And my older sister was getting married, and my dad was able to book the Pan America. I walked in there, part of the wedding party at the age of 12 years old. Could you imagine being 12 years old, dressed up real pretty and walking into that place? It made an impact on me. Back then, everybody dressed up. Nobody was casual. Everyone dressed. We all wore suits. I used to spend hours like trying to figure out what I was gonna wear. So you've got this amazing space, the Pan American Ballroom, that holds over 2,500 people on multiple levels. You've got different opportunities for different acts to be able to perform. Originally, big band was the big sound. Latin sound, Latin music was all the wave in the 1950s and by the early 60s. But by the 60s and 70s, Tejano music had grown tremendously. You've got lots of important acts that play the Pan American Ballroom. I remember a band named Eloy Perez. He used to play there, and Isidro Lopez. Sunny and the Sunliners and Little Joe and the Latinaires were the two top groups that we wanted to go hear. I remember Fats Domino, Chubby Checker, and I remember the bands, they would play the Buddy Holly songs, the Richard Valley songs. We were like any other teenager. We were hearing the music on the radio, and then we had a chance to hear it live. Any valid group had to play at the Pan American. If they weren't performing at the Pan American, they hadn't made it yet. The first year I performed was 1964. I was 14 when I performed first. It was with Hector Guerra and his orchestra. I performed there with Perez Prado. He's the Mambo King, and he was world renowned. When those songs would come on, we would scream just like any other American girl and run and start dancing in the, in the big dance floor. You know, that was, we were young, that was our music, and we were enjoying it. As soon as the music started and as soon as the boys would come and ask you to dance, you'd jump up and go dance. It was a safe place. It was a friendly place. Everybody was happy. So no night would be complete at the Pan America Ballroom without a visit to the 24-hour burger joint known as Papa Burger. Papa Burger was absolutely the favorite hotspot for all the folks, not just the people attending the events, but also the band would often be caught having a burger at Papa Burger. After the dance, everybody would go to Papa Burgers. It would get crowded. The singers uh, would come by here at night to get burgers. Whoever worked here got to meet them. In fact, the burgers were just 15 cents for a little Papa Burger and 35 cents for a big Papa Burger. All of the interaction flowed from the Pan American and straight to Papa Burger. If you were dancing with someone and he kind of mentioned to you, I'll meet you at Papa Burger. That was part of that little social tie-in. You felt like a part of the experience when you went there, a gathering space afterwards, and it was just part of everyone's experience at the Pan American Ballroom. Now, people often ask what happened to the Pan American Ballroom, this iconic space that people love and remember over the years. Well, by the late 1970s, you have a situation where music is changing, tastes are changing. The Pan America kind of fell out of favor because there were other locations in different parts of town that opened up a similar type of place. Plus, the old-fashioned days of, you know, Latin 
jazz bands and Tejano music started to kind of change and, and the experience overall of going out wasn't the same as it used to be. By 1983, they build a center across the way and they use the parking lot space that the Pan American Ballroom used to be at for just simply parking. So the lot is there, the history is there, but it's lost in people's minds and we love to be able to tell these stories to regain some of that energy about what the community used to be like back in the day. So here we are on the actual site of the Pan American Ballroom. It happened right here. This is Pinnacle Street. This was actually closed off much later on, but in the heyday, it was on this corner over here. You had a John Stop beautiful gas station across the street. You also had Papa Burger not too far, Caddy Corner over there. And when you first walked in, you would have this courtyard, which is right over here. And then where the slab is at in this area in the shadows of downtown Houston is where the actual Pan American Ballroom used to sit. You know, lots of important milestones happened here. It really was the center of all the activity, music, culture, life of the Hispanic community back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And really, uh, this particular ground matters in Houston's Hispanic history. I describe it to my grandkids because they're always asking me, Nana, when you were young, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I described it to them as having good, clean fun. It's invaluable uh, to be able to hear live music and be able to dance and dress up and, and enjoy each other, you know, respect each other, admire each other. The place was important. It did affect many people here in the Houston area. It brought us the music, it brought us the culture, it brought families together. And what more is a Hispanic family, which is the love of music, the love of family. And I'm thankful that Pan America during those times offered that to us. Anytime you can have an opportunity for a community to get together and identify with the space and culture and music and food, all these things identify and make a community a community. So that is one of the reasons why the Pan American Ballroom has touched so many people's lives and why those memories matter. And we need to make sure that younger generations understand the connection that they have with that space. It's gone, but not in the hearts of all of us. We will continue to relive and memorize it. And the more we talk about it, the more we showcase the history, the more people understand that the community had a space that mattered to them.